Hey, Pokemon Masters, Berkey Batobi here, and in my time doing Pokemon videos on YouTube, I've studied the works of many Pokemon professors. Professor Rowan of the Sinnoh region, an expert in Pokemon evolution. Professor Sycamore of the Kalos region, an expert in Mega Evolution and brilliant with hair care products. And finally, of course, we have Professor Oak, the OG professor, an expert of Pokemon behavior. But interestingly, Oak has always been obsessed with one species of Pokemon in particular. I'm talking about Rotom. He's got a weird obsession with this Pokemon, and I think in this video, we're gonna find out why. Let's take a look. Yes, Pokemon Masters. So, Professor Oak and Rotom, what's the deal? Well, in the episode to catch a Rotom, Professor Oak is out in the wilds trying to catch a, well, a Rotom. Imagine if it wasn't. Imagine if it was just like Zekrom or something. Anyway, this is in the Pokemon animated series where Professor Oak is trying to write a report and do a special research report on the Pokemon Rotom. Famous for being able to hijack machinery and change its forms, Rotom is a particularly interesting Pokemon. It shares music with legendary Pokemon in the Sinnoh games and also appears in all sorts of other appliances outside of its main forms. We see the Rotom Dex, Rotom Phone and Rotom Bike as well as the Rotom Drone that happens happens in the Gala region, there are Rotoms everywhere. But this idea of Oak having a sort of special interest in Rotom, it's really interesting because Oak has loads of trainers who've started off from Pallet Town, who've, who their first Pokemon came from his lab, and they go out into the world, they catch Pokemon, fill up their teams, and when their team has six Pokemon, they send Pokemon back to Oak's lab to be studied under him. He could have got any one of those trainers, including Ash, who's in this episode, in this area, to have caught a Rotom and sent it back. But he had to go out and get it himself, all the way to Torum Island. And yeah, Torum is a anagram of Rotom. But if Ash is already there, why not just get Ash on the phone and say, hey, Ash? Catch me a Rotom, won't you? Send it over. That'd be great. Thanks, mate. But on top of all of this, it's not just in the animated series. Oak has connections to Sinnoh, where Rotom is from. In fact, his house is in Eterna City. He has a home there. Makes sense. He used to study under Rowan, so perhaps this is where he lived. Right next to the forest that homes the old chateau. Home of... Rotom. And it doesn't stop there. Oh no, Oak's connections are plentiful. Good thing Oak isn't there all the time, or else Rowan, well, let's just say that he wouldn't really have a job with the Giga Chad Oak running around, who surely outclassed the old man from Sinnoh without a problem. As far as connections are concerned, well, let's not also forget about Oak's letter, a key item from the Gen 4 games, which brings you to the Flower Paradise, where you can catch a Shaman. Hmm, makes me wonder what his connections are to Shaman. Well, luckily for you, Toby, you already explained that on your channel. And of course, Oak is also connected to the Pal Park, a great place in Sinnoh that people often forget about. The only regions we actually see the old professor actively go to are Kanto, Johto, and Sinnoh. Which, I mean, you know, makes sense. They're all one big country, continent. Uh, yeah, they never tell us how big regions actually are supposed to be. But is it a coincidence? Well, if he was just going to Johto, I would say, yeah, maybe, sure, because, well, Johto's literally right next to Kanto. However, well, Sinnoh's more out of the way. You gotta go a little bit further to get to Sinnoh through the Sinjo ruins. So it seems that Oak has a much more concrete goal in mind when going to Sinnoh. Ah, hey Prima, and yeah, it's true, Oak does have a bunch of other connections to Rotom and little connections to Sinnoh. In fact, there's a whole theory about Oak's connection to the Pal Park, that area of Sinnoh that most people kind of forget about, and I don't know what they're gonna do for Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl, but we'll discover that later. Anyway, there's a whole theory over on Prima Diva's channel that we've done together, so click the link in the top of the description when you're done to head on over there, make sure you've got to open another tab, two parts of the same bigger whole stories about Professor Oak. Speaking of which, another clear connection between Oak and Rotom technology is the Pokedex, a device that Professor Oak made in Generation 1 that nowadays homes a Rotom. In the trailer for Legends Arceus, it's told that you will be creating the very first Pokedex. But wait a second, didn't Oak create the very first Pokedex? Well, yes and no. It's a little bit tricky considering that Dexes mean different things in different contexts. The Pokedex that you'll be creating will be something more akin to a Pokemon encyclopedia. You know, where someone goes on a journey and just writes down everything they can find about the Pokemon and also draw pretty pictures. Now, this is nothing related to Pokemon, but you get the idea. But I mean, it sounds fun, right? Going on a grand adventure, drawing pictures of Pokemon. Well, yeah, it's fun. It, in fact, it's just like in the fourth movie, you know, where Oak drew the pictures of Pikachu and stuff. 
That's really fun. Well, I mean, as long as you'll be able to not have that Pikachu move, that is. That's where the Pokedex of today wins, which is often referred to as just, well, the Pokedex. It's the first digitized Pokedex, and by many considered to be the first real Pokedex. This was a real turning point in history. No longer did we need to rely on all the heaps of paper to get by. I mean, you could still take all that paper with you, but good luck on drawing that Pikachu from behind the bushes. Uh, well, I'll just quickly take a picture and instantly know all of its data. And this handy dandy dex has been made even more handier and handier over the years. In over the eight generations of Pokemon, we've seen this machine rock a total of 12 different looks, with the most recent two having Rodom as a prison. Oh, yeah, that's, uh, that's definitely the wrong strip. Um, <clears throat> uh, mixed in with the machine itself with the Rodom Dex in Alola and the Dex in Galar being an app on your Rodom phone. <laughs> Kids in their apps nowadays, huh? The evolution of technology in the Pokemon world is fascinating. And while I'm not gonna get super deep into the Pokemon timeline, I've done plenty of videos trying to deal with that mess. There is a generally accepted kind of consensus about at least some of the games. Generations one and three happening at around the same time where the latest innovations are the Pokedex from Oaks Labory, Laboratory, Laboratory, and the uh, Pokenav of the Devon Corporation, which is just a GPS tracker. Fast forward a couple of years and you've got the games of Diamond and Pearl happening at around the same time as Hot Gold and Soul Silver. Their technology has advanced, and we now have an updated Pokedex, of course. But we've also got the Poketch by the Poketch Company, which is a very early smartwatch, I guess. And then also we've got the Poke Gear by Selfco, again, one of the other big companies in the Pokemon world. And it's a sort of take, an early take on flip phones. But then we have the time jump, whether it's short or big, whatever you believe about the Pokemon timeline, Generation 5 happens a little way after generations four and two and we can see this reflected in the technology where the latest bit of tech then is the x transceiver which is again a kind of it's like an updated smartwatch where rather than just a touch screen i guess you've got an lcd screen or you've just got like a phone screen where you can actually talk to people and facetime them or whatever sure it's not called facetime x transceive them in pokemon i guess and then in the next generation the next big bit of technology is the holocaster but that was made by lysander labs but then something Something strange happens. By the time you get to the Alola region, you've got the Rotom Dex, which of course is a Pokedex, and then you've got the Rotom Phone, where basically all of the modern technology is contained, including the Pokedex as an application within it. It's very clear that Oak has been improving its Pokedex technology over the many, many years, you know, making it better, more accessible. So partnering with big boy companies like Devon and Silph Co, well, it would certainly make a lot of sense. It would certainly help with the finances and it would give him much more researchers to work together with. And they, yeah, overall it would be a really smart move on the old man's part. In fact, did you know that there's actually a Rodom room in the Silphco building basement in Heart Gold and Soul Silver? Could that somehow be suggesting that Silphco had some interest in using Rodom in their technology? It's certainly possible, but we don't actually think that Oak went into this direction with his ideas. Instead, we think that he called up to the other Pokemon researchers, the Pokemon professors, and asked their help instead. I mean, sure, Silphco and Devon, they're grand companies, huge, but they don't actually research the Pokemon. Like they don't actually go onto the field and interact with these creatures themselves. Okay, so in the Gen 6 games, guess where you have to go in order to transform Rotom into its other forms? Hmm? Hmm? Well, it's in the labs of Sycamore and Birch. And Sycamore and Oak, well, he and Oak have a lot more in common than you might first assume. An NPC in Sycamore's lab will tell you that Sycamore was originally from the Sinnoh region and also studied under Professor Rowan, just like Professor Oak. And Samson Oak, you know, Oak's cousin in Alola, Oak Wright says that a young fellow from Sinnoh helped him develop the Rodom Dex. Now, if he just mentioned his great hair, I'm sure it would have been more obvious, but we can easily assume that that was indeed Sycamore. Another NPC in Sycamore's lab tells you that they're actually studying Rodom, and guess where they're standing? Well, right next to the Rodom appliances, which, you know, makes sense. And then finally, another NPC in, again, that same lab, mentions the Poke Radar. Why is the Poke Radar of any importance, though? Well, think about it. What can the Poke Radar do? It can scan the environment and see where everything is. And maybe, just maybe, that may have been implemented in the Rodom Dex's map and photo features. So Sycamore and his aides, Rowan, Birch, Samson Oak, and of course, Professor Oak, they're all cross-collaborating with each other to research Rodom with the intent of creating the Rodom Dex. 
the ultimate infusion between Pokemon and technology. But it doesn't stop there, because have you noticed how in every generation, alongside the Pokedex progressing, there's also been that little bit of technology, whether that's the Poke Gear, the Pokenav, the Poketch, the X-Transceiver, or the Holocaster, and then by the time that Rotom is introduced to the Pokedex in Alola, there aren't really any other big technological advances, as if everything's become narrowed in on the Pokedex. Well, I think that's because Professor Oak has been working alongside these technological powerhouses. And I don't think it's either of the big two, Devon or Selfco. Sure, there is GPS technology in the Pokenav, and that can also be seen in the, the, the Pokedex Rotom phone. And yeah, okay, the Poke Gear that did look like a flip phone, and the Pokedex, the modern Rotom Dex, is a Rotom phone. But I actually think the technological advancement here is more centered around the Poketch company. Because that jump from Hot Gold, Soul Silver, and Diamond and Pearl era to the Generation 5 era, that wasn't a jump of the Poke Gear, a flip phone turning into a super smartwatch. It was of a regular, early smartwatch, progressing into a super smartwatch. Clearly, some investment went into the Poketch company. And on top of that, Professor Oak appears in the Sinnoh region with a whole bunch of Poketch applications that only he has access to, which he can give you access to. And one of the key features of the Poketch is the dowsing machine, which is the basically modernized version of the item finder, which first appears in Generation 1, given to you by one of Oak's aides. I think it's pretty Pretty clear that Professor Oak has been working with the Poketch company from Sinnoh, his favorite place to be, all along, helping develop the Pokeetch, Pokeetch, Poketch into the X Transceiver, and then eventually the Rotom phone down the line. And Professor Oak has a ton of other ties to Jubilife City as well. When it comes to Jubilife TV, whoa, 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 Toby, slow down. If you go any further than that, you'll be diving into my theory about Oak's role in the Pal Park and what its purpose actually is. So why don't you save that for my video? Yes, sorry, uh, you're right. This is your territory, Prima. We will head on over to your channel to check out that theory. But the conclusion here is this. Professor Oak, for years, not only developed the first digital Pokedex, but wanted to make it more convenient for people to carry and to work with. He iterated on it a number of times, noticing the technological progression of the world around him. And he teamed up with the Poketch company from Sinnoh, a place he's very familiar with and helped work on various Poketch apps, turning the item finder into the dowsing machine, ultimately so that one day, the technology for the Poketch would become the X transceiver, and then beyond that, the screen technology that he he would need to combine with his Rotom Dex for the Rotom phone. And that is why Oak has a strange obsession with Rotom. And for the other theory about Professor Oak at the Pal Park, well, you should all check that link in the description below. So hi, Pokemon Masters. This is Ash Ketchum. You just watched a video by Bird Keeper Toby. That makes you a Pokemon Master. A huge thank you to those of you who have been supporting this channel financially, whether that's through buying my merch, my Tree of Life poster, or those of you supporting me on Patreon, including the big patrons of this month, JD Gottlich, Michael Hornchew, and Matty Barr. Thank you.